What I can share with you is my unique lens, the way that it affected me, right? And I don't, you're not gonna take every single thing, but you just take the nuggets, right? The things that shift for you, that resonate with you, that vibrate in harmony with your conscious awareness, that dip your toe a little bit to the outside of what is comfortable and what has been comfortable so that you can have an opportunity to expand today. But I learned this lesson viscerally. In 2003, I just graduated from university, and I went to visit my parents, my mom and my stepdad. They'd just done a six-figure renovation on their house. They were so proud. They were so cute. They were sitting in the, the, their kitchen. They had built this custom island. It had refrigerated drawers. They, they were pumped. And my parents were big coffee drinkers their whole life. They were these kinds of crazy people that had a coffee at 11 o'clock at night and then went to bed. Anybody in here do that? I, I, how do you guys do that? If I have a coffee after 11 a.m., I can't sleep. So I, this was who they were. They often added chocolate, too. And they could still go to bed half an hour later and pass out. It was a superpower, I think. But I'll never forget this moment where the little hairs stood up on the back of my neck. Anybody ever had that moment where the hairs stand up on the back of your neck? When Alvin said these words, he said, yeah, I'm not drinking coffee anymore. And I said, what? This is, I mean, that's your thing. You drink coffee, he doesn't drink, he was Chinese, he didn't have that enzyme for the alcohol, so coffee, this is his thing. He says, yeah, I'm not drinking coffee anymore. It doesn't agree with my system. All right, so that kind of, it just had a little zest to it, that, that I had a little energy pull when he said that, but you know, rational mind kicks in, you carry on and away you go. A few weeks later, my mom says to me, you know, there's something really wrong with dad, he's really sick. They think he has diverticulitis, bacteria in your colon. They've given him, given him some, some antibiotics, but you know, he's been on the antibiotics for a week, and nothing's changing, nothing's happening. And um, my girlfriend works at the university hospital, so I think I'm gonna take him in there and see if we can get a second opinion. So fast forward, there definitely was something wrong. Right away, they did, performed a bunch of tests and ultrasounds and found that there certainly looked like there were some tumors, likely cancerous, in his abdominal cavity. And so they rushed him to VGH and decided they're gonna perform abdominal surgery and try to remove some of these tumors. Now he's 42 years old, otherwise healthy. One of these you know, zest for life types of people, six foot two, over 200 pounds, just an energy ball. And um, I remember they, you know, pre-op that day we chatted with him and he was so optimistic. He's like, I got this, right? Just no, no problem, this is, they're gonna take a couple tumors out, it's all gonna be good, good to go. I went to the gym, because that's what you do when you can't sit, right? Go do something. Went to the gym, came back, post-op. I'm sitting in the post-op recovery waiting room with my mom. It's just me and my mom. And the doctor comes in and he says, can I see you guys in my office? Little hair stand up in the back of your neck again. This, I just knew something is wrong. There's, this is not good. And so go into the office, meet with the doctor, and the doctor says, listen, guys, I don't have good news for you. We opened him up. We took out a half a dozen tumors, and he said it, it didn't even touch the surface. He said, imagine I took a salt shaker full of cancerous tumors, and I just sprinkled it all over his abdominal cavity. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with. And he said, I want to be honest with you. I want to be blunt. He doesn't have a lot of time. If I were you, I would get your affairs in order. My estimation is he has about four months to live. Now, if you've ever been in the room when somebody is told that they have a terminal illness and that they have four months to live, you know, right? I can feel it right now. It is like you can taste the air, you, every, right? Yes, everything about you stops and recognizes this is the present moment. That is what it feels like. You know, we all practice, we all meditate, we all have our mindful practices to try to experience the visceralness of that present moment. That brought me there. And that taught me, he lasted six months, and his, we all learned an incredible amount through that experience as a family. You never wish suffering on yourself or others, but when it does come into your life, it expands you in ways that you can't even imagine. And though he's not physically with us today, his legacy is always with us. And what I always remember and I always think about is that the time is now.